We're popping bottles, baby. The Minnesota Twins are division champs. Third time in five years. What's up, everyone? Back in the lab. We're back at it. Another Minnesota Twins postcast right here on the Locked On Sports Minnesota Network. You got myself, Luke Inman, on X, at Luke underscore Spinman. See that? That's Sam Ekstrom. Go follow him on X, at Sam Ekstrom. And Sam, we'll kind of wait for some more peeps to jump into the live feed here as we discuss the Twins. 8-6 victory over the Angels. And what's the over-under on just how many bottles of champagne are going to get uncorked tonight in that locker room? Like, honestly, what's your guess? How many bottles would you guess the average team goes through when celebrating a postseason birth. Yeah, I just saw him roll the, the cooler in there with a bunch of bunch Here of we go. You, you got one. But bunch of bot. I was waving it for like 20 <laughs> seconds and you didn't see me. Um I also had my party glasses. I got the Elton Johns. Oh, let's go. Here. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you got to that's a veteran move. Yeah, that's a veteran move. You got to have those goggles, man. You got to have eye protection, but I mean in one cooler it looked like they had about a dozen. I got to imagine they've got about four coolers that they're rolling in there like like two bottles per member of the 25 man roster and most of those are going to end up on the like what do you even call the the like tarping that they do to right, the, right, yeah, the right. The taper, yeah. So um, it's going to be a blast in there. It's, and they mentioned this in the broadcast. So fun that first time in 13 years, you get to clinch on the field in front of the fans. Yeah. In 19, they had to wait for someone else to lose. In 20, there were no fans because of COVID. So that's a long time coming. The crowd showed up, 32,000. They had to wait a bit in the ninth. Duran making us nervous, um, but it was worth it. Uh, cool moment for the fans and uh, hopefully more to come. Yeah, you hate to back in to a division win, right? Especially at home, like you said. They kept showing that graphic up there on Bally Sports. It's like, yeah, Twins win, or if the Guardians and Tigers lose, it's like nobody wants to see that and then go in and, what, celebrate that. And and you're right, they better not party too hard. I know there's a lot of rookies on this team. A lot of young guys probably want to whoop it up all night, but they got that noon game. I should say 110 first pitch tomorrow, so they better not whoop it up too hard. Uh, before we get into it, quick reminder, this postcast episode brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics to treat over 50 types of infections. Get yours today at chasemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E Medical. Dot com. Also, a quick reminder, too, while you're here, subscribe to the show channel if you haven't already. Just takes one click of the mouse, and we'll do the rest. We got you. We got all the latest news and notes surrounding not just your Minnesota Twins on this channel, but we've got your football fix as well. Vikes, Gophers coverage around the clock. Gophers legend Ron Johnson, Carol Evans' very own Reggie Wilson. We got Arif Hassan and Luke Braun. Twins, Vikes, Gophers, soon to be Wild and Timberwolves coverage as well. Each and every day, all right here on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota Network. Okay, Sam, let's get into the nuts and bolts of today's game, tonight's game, I should say, first and foremost. Then we'll talk playoff picture, the injury updates, etc. Twins win this one, 8-6. They win the 2023 AL Central title. Pablo Lopez, six innings, gives up three runs. He looked great for four straight innings, by the way. Little speed bump there in the fifth, gave up all three runs, and then he kind of he came back in the sixth, looked settled down, and then they brought in Louis Varlin. Uh, it was all tied up at threes apiece before Alex Kirilov. He hit that solo bomb to put him up one, and then in the seventh, Twins kind of busted this thing wide open with four runs. Everyone kind of got in on the action in the seventh. Polanco and Farmer, a couple RBI doubles. Farmer, great game, two for three, two walks. RBI filling in that shortstop for Correa. Uh, Kirilov, correct me if I'm wrong. I think Kirilov, probably your MVP in the lineup, team leading three RBIs. He had a home run as well. Yeah. Um, they had that nice cushy lead. You mentioned it at the top. Dealbar comes in, gives up two runs in the eighth. Johan Duran makes things about as dramatic as possible. He allows one run, then loads the bases up. Two outs, ninth inning, finally puts it away. He ended up pitching almost 40 pitches, I believe, which is kind of crazy. Twins hold on, though. They win their third division title in five years. Uh, Dick Bramer with the great call at the end. A championship returns to Twins territory. I mean, you just got goosebumps going on. Love Watching that, that unfold the way it did there, Sam. Uh, give me your two cents on tonight's game and just your overall take on the, the type of baseball the Twins have played lately leading into the playoffs here now. Yeah, you could feel the atmosphere in the building, and that was not the feeling of 
a team that was sort of being gifted a division title. Like that excitement was over, I think, a legitimate baseball team that has earned the right to be hopeful about this postseason. Look at some of the this stuff post All-Star break. Um, ninth in batting average, fourth in OBP, fifth in slugging, fifth in OPS. Pitching staff's been great all year long. If they were in the NL, Luke, I mean, they'd be a wild card team, right? In if they were in if they weren't winning the division, they'd be right there in the AL wild card chase. So this is a playoff team. Like they they needed a while to get to this point. They were under 500 at the All Star break, but uh, they're I think they've got the sixth best record. I have this number here. Uh, seventh best record in baseball since the All-Star break. So wow. you can't change what happened in the first 91 games before the All-Star break. You can't. It's a sunk, sunk cost. But the Twins have done everything in their power since the break to legitimize themselves. And I don't think that you need to put an asterisk next to this division title, Luke. I mean, they're going to, with eight games left against these teams, they probably win six. I mean, they're going to be an 88-win baseball team, too short of 90, I think. And that record's going to look pretty good by the end of the week next week. So I, I'm really excited for them and ready to get hurt again by this team that has an 18-game postseason losing streak. And I, I can't help myself. I keep looking at the Houston score. Houston keeps losing, so that AL West champion just seems yeah. kind of attainable too. Yeah, I, I want to touch on that here in just a couple minutes. Yeah. But just to stem off what you mentioned, I think at this point here, eight games left in the season – you just want to see them continue to play good, solid baseball now, no matter who's in the lineup. Of course, we'll give you some updates on Correa and Royce Lewis a little bit later on, but good, solid baseball is exactly what they've been doing the last month or two. You ripped out some good stats. That's what's put them in this position. They're in right now, clinching the division title with still over a week and a half to play, and now they can rest easy a little bit. Shoulders can come down. They got that monkey off their back. They got that box checked. And now they can just start to mentally prepare, I think, for the playoffs. Unlike a lot of other teams who have to take this thing all the way down to the wire, which, as we know, I mean, that can be so much more emotionally taxing, emotionally exhausting as well. And, and when I say they've been playing solid baseball, by the way, I, I think about the solid starting pitching they've got. Um, they've gotten some actual clutch, timely hitting, which that was like a foreign language to this lineup the first half of the season, if you remember. And plus, they just they continue to play fundamentally sound defense out on the field as well. So what are the advantages of locking this thing up with a week and a half to go? And like, what's your confidence level as far as kind of momentum, right? You ripped off some great stats about how hot this baseball club is because not all playoff teams are built the same and some come – you know, enter October with a lot more momentum and confidence than others who sometimes they back their way in. Yeah, I think that primarily it allows you the luxury of getting your injured guys healthy and you're not stressing about not having them in the lineup, right? So would Carlos Correa have gone on the 10-day IL if they needed to win every game? Maybe not. Uh, Royce Lewis, grade one hamstring strain, we'll get into that. You know, who knows if you would have been on the IL, would they have been trying to push through that? Now they don't have to. Now they can get as healthy as possible. I don't know if they can be truly healthy with those injuries, but they can at least wait until the last couple games of the season, maybe get some swings in then and then be ready for the playoffs. They can get their pitching staff in order. Do you remember the the game 163 season, Luke? I know you were there. You tell me all the time. You brag about it. You rub it in my face. You were at the game. No big but deal. do you remember how hard the twins had to work not only to, to win that game, but to get to that point, they blew out all their pitchers. So they had to start Brian Dunsing at Yankee That's Stadium right. in game one and obviously got swept in that series, but they, they won't have to start Randy Dobnak or Brian Dunsing in game one. I mean, they're going to have it set up so that I think, I think Pablo, although something in me still likes Sonny Gray a little more, um, Pablo is just a little more susceptible to that big inning as he kind of exhibited tonight. And Gray, to me, seems a little steadier. But either way, pick your poison. A great one-two punch and then a serviceable number three. You can get that all lined up. Give him an extra day of rest if you want to. And uh, your staff should be good to go. There's no need to really put the pedal down uh, against Colorado in that final series. 
Uh, who are the 2023 Minnesota Twins? Like, I want to go over some of the older, you know, just briefly, but some of the older playoff teams that we've seen the Twins put out there. Uh, because every team's built a little different, right? Like, especially in baseball, by the way, no salary cap, you know that. There's tons of different flavors to choose from, so to speak, different ways to build the roster in this league. Uh, when I look at this team specifically, how they're built, more so uh, how they're winning games right now, it goes back to, again, the rotation, quality starting pitching. Sure, they don't have maybe that one flame-throwing ace, but they've definitely got some good depth. Great team defensively, which it always feels like that's a trait, by the way, of all these best Twins teams going back to the early 2000s. Uh, and then you mentioned it, some good stats there, too. They've just really turned it on. They're red hot in September, too, uh, with the bats. And, and that, for me, I think has got to be the most encouraging sign you want to see right now. You mentioned some stats. Here's a couple others that really stuck out to me. Number one in the league in runs per game with over six. This is in September, mind you. Number one in the league in RBIs. Number two in the league in walks. Tied for third in winning percentage. And then they're a top six ball club in home runs, base percentage, and OPS. So, I mean, those are some wild stats right there. And I think it's such a breath of fresh air and should give fans a lot of hope and excitement about their postseason chances compared to what we got that first half of the year, which was, do you remember? It was a lot more like boomer bust lineup in the fact that more times than not, it was yeah. either going to be like Bomba squad style where they'd win with the long ball or they were just striking out. And don't get me wrong. They still lead the league in strikeouts. So that's not going to change at this point. Like they are who they are in that department anyways. But as of late, they've been doing such a better job of scoring more consistent runs, more quality at bats, and again, better timely hitting that isn't always maybe dependent on the long ball like it was once, you know, three, four, five months ago. Is that kind of a fair assessment? Or what what would you say are the obvious strengths or traits or identity of this team if you were, you know, an opposing fan and had to describe what you're up against if you're facing this Minnesota Twins team come playoff time? Like, how do they beat you? Yeah, um, I think we got to the point where they feel balanced offensively it, there's not as much volatility that we saw early in the season franchise record tonight by the way luke 12th player in alex kirloff to have 10 or more home runs that's balance wow. in the power wow. department and you scan this lineup too, luke um one through nine tonight everyone's around that 250 260 range i noticed what were, that. We, what were we complaining about yeah in may in june You've got guys hitting below 200. You had black holes in that lineup that were just out machines. Kepler, ice cold. Kepler, wow. he's completely turned it around. Castro, I mean, people were confused about Castro early in the season. They're like, who is this guy? Why is he playing so much? Well, he's turned it around, obviously. Uh, just tremendous strides taken by that offense up and down. You know, credit to the coaching staff, too, to make adjustments, I assume, with a lot of these players. And, um, but this team, I think ultimately in the postseason, they are going to be based around the pitching staff. I mean, that that's what's different about this Twins team from other Twins teams is I think they're deeper. And I think you've got some really interesting bullpen guys, too. I know Theobar gave up a home run tonight, but the he's the one-inning lefty. Uh, Varlin seems to fit like a glove in there. Brock Stewart, kind of the wild card rookie that you brought up earlier in the season and threw gas, and maybe he can join you, too. And then, you know... Duran honestly kind of worries me a little bit, especially when he, he showed what he did tonight. Um, but hey, you've got the the flamethrower coming out in the ninth inning regardless. So it's a very intriguing pitching staff. I kind of feel, if you want me to like compare this team to another, I, it feels a little bit like the 2017 team that through 91 games, was also, they were 46 and 45, basically the same as this team. Then they ended eight games above 500. They turned it on late. Um, and they had a lot of young players, like a lot a young core that included Buxton, Kepler, Rosario, Sano, Polanco. Like those were all pretty young players at the time. And they went to the wild card game against New York, uh, a Yankee Stadium, and lost. But I felt really excited about that team going into that game. And I kind of feel the same way about this one. It just it took them a while to catch their stride, but here they are. And now I think they can really win. A lot of good points there. I want to talk about the playoff picture real quick because I know every year so much of the playoff seeding isn't really figured out until, I mean, this stuff comes down to the absolute wire. These guys play 162 games and somehow more times than not, you need every single game to decide the ultimate seeding at the end, if not more game 163 reference. But as of now, 
We know the Twins are going to host at least one playoff round, be hosting two playoff games at Target Field. I want to get into what that could all look like here in a second, but you mentioned the Astros. There's still a chance. Granted, a small chance. There's still a chance. Eight games to go. Twins could lock up the number two seed, leapfrog the Astros. And I say that because they're four games back as of now. And when you look at the remaining schedule, though, for both these two teams, Twins have about as easy of a schedule as you could ask for. Two more with the Angels, Oakland A's, Rockies. Meanwhile, the Astros, they're going to be in an absolute dogfight till the very end, playing the Mariners and the Diamondbacks. The other team in the mix for that two seed is the Mariners. They play the Astros, so they're going to beat each other up. And then the Rangers, who's right in the mix as well. So is there any hope at all for the number two seed for the Minnesota Twins? Or are you going to shoot this dream down right now, live on air, in front of millions? I got to I, I gotta shoot it down. And you know, you know why? <laughs> It's because you're not chasing just one team. You're chasing three. Yeah. And those three teams are playing each other in a couple of those series. So while one of them is guaranteed to lose, another one is guaranteed to win. So Mm -hmm. you would really need very specific results for that to happen. So for instance, tonight, Houston lost. Twins won. So the Twins are three back of Houston. However, Houston got leapfrogged by Texas in the process. So the Twins only gained half a game on that champion and they have to beat the champion of the AL West. And it does freak me out a little bit when I see Houston as the third wild card right now. So if the playoffs started now, it would be twins Astros. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I love that. Um, Obviously Houston beat the twins here a couple of years ago and they've got ring cred and uh, I don't want to play Houston. So, well, well, of those three, let's just touch on that real quick here. 30 seconds. I mean, we touched on it briefly on Wednesday show, but, you know, explain it to me like I'm five. Who should the Twins want to play in the playoffs in round one and why? Like, if I knew nothing about the Rangers, Mariners, and Astros, for that matter, which two team do we want the Twins to match up against? Like, like because I know all these teams in the AL playoffs are going to be a, a tough out come October. Yeah, Um I kind of think Toronto is the team you actually want mm. in the in the wild card series. Um, if it's an AL West team, te- it's t- it's tough because the Twins played really well against Texas, but Texas was also mired in one of the worst slumps you'll see. They caught Texas at absolutely the best possible time. If they catch them again, Texas does have good left-handed pitching. They do have a very powerful offense. Um, so I guess I, I would maybe actually kind of lean away from Texas. And I would say uh, Seattle. I think I'd rather go Toronto and then Seattle, then Texas, then Houston. That would be my, my four of the, I think those are kind of the four realistic candidates, unless I'm missing one. Um, But they're all tough and they're probably all going to have a better record than the twins. Let's be honest. So the twins might be home underdogs in that series. Yeah. I was going to mention that too. It only takes one quick glance at the standings to realize the Mariners, Blue Jays, Rangers in way tougher divisions, mind you have better records than the twins who are playing in a historically terrible division this year. So it's safe to say then, correct me if I'm wrong, come playoff time, the, the lines in Vegas, the odds, the spreads will likely have the twins as underdogs in round one, despite the fact they'll be hosting the first two games of the series. Yeah. Very interested to see that, um, you know, pitching matchup dictates those lines a lot for sure. Um, so, you know, we'll see, we'll see how the matchups play out. Um, but I did notice the twins were like fourth likeliest in the AL to make the world series to win the league. So they're obviously like Vegas currently, they like them right now because they are, getting that home wild card series, which is a big deal. And pitching can can win you games in the postseason, and the Twins have that. So if you just ignore the first half of the season, I, I think, and looked at the second half in a vacuum, yeah, the Twins have a lot of momentum right now with uh, with the books and the betters. Uh, don't need to go super deep on this. We'll save more of the meat and potatoes of this one for another show. But third division title for this team in five years. We all remember the great runs they had in 09 and 2010. Plus the mid-2000s were super special. That was fun as well. Where does this team stack up compared to the rest of them when you step back and just look at the big picture? Like, how is this team going to be remembered when we look back, you know, five, ten years and stack them all up next to each other, if you had to guess? Boy, um, See, all of those teams suffered a very similar fate. True. Right? There's True. only we don't there's know only yet. one there's only one unique team there. It's the O2 team. 
the team that mm-hmm. beat the Moneyball A's, mm-hmm. won a playoff series. The last team that won a playoff game was 04. Um, right. 19 years, Luke. Wow. It's been. Um, I'm in, you know what is in, this is kind of a different team, Luke, because a lot of those other teams, maybe down to, I mean, virtually all of them, those are 90 plus win teams. They, a lot of them, they, they led the central kind of wire to wire. A couple years were pretty special where they had to, you know, chase down the Tigers or the White Sox. You know, obviously, 06 was really fun, but that was also a team that won 96 games too. They were, they were really, really good. 2010, they were dominant. 2009 maybe i mean the 2019 they had to be plucky late and then they won that game Mm -hmm. 163 maybe this is a 2019 that just has a little bit of late season magic and momentum um going into the playoffs and baseball kind of is a momentum sport because you play every day so uh it's hard to compare but we could be seeing kind of the dawn of a new generation like maybe this kicks off a run of teams with this core uh we'll never know that for sure but yeah, it, it is a different feeling team than others the past couple decades, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, too. And, you know, you, you can't help but when you think about the last two decades with the Twins, what's probably most crazy and sickening to think about, you think about all those special teams is the fact that almost every one of those playoff teams entered the playoffs with some major injuries, you know, to the biggest players right mm-hmm. near the end of the season. 2020, they lost, what, Donaldson and Buxton right before the series started. Uh, 2010, you lose Justin Morneau, who was on pace for another MVP type of season. Mm -hmm. Fluky, freaky accident sliding into second base. 06, they lost Francisco Lariano for the season. That was more in the middle of the summer, but that was a heartbreaker. Yeah. That's such a heartbreak. So you go up and down the list of these Twins playoff teams, and there's been so many big-name injuries they've had to deal with, and it just totally derailed their chances, or at least any type of momentum, to make a splash in October. Leaves you with that bitter taste in your mouth and thoughts of, you know, what if this guy's healthy or this guy could play that series? Maybe this whole thing looks a lot different. So hopefully that's not the case this year, obviously, with Correa and Royce Lewis. They're battling some injuries. We're going to touch on that here in a second as we start to close up shop. But first, let me remind you this, this episode brought to you by Chase Medical. Life throws plenty of curveballs at each and every one of us. That's why Jace Case is out there providing you with five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use, giving you that peace of mind. You've got access to the right medication on hand whenever you need it with the Jace case. Jace case is simple. They've handled the evaluation process. They've got licensed pharmacy medication delivery to your doorstep, along with consultation and care when you need it. Save over $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical. Plus, save an additional $20 using the code Locked On. That's one word, Locked On at checkout over at jacemedical.com, J-A-S-E medical.com. Use the promo code Locked On for the peace of mind when you need it. All right, Sam, quick update on Correa and Royce Lewis. If you missed it, Correa dealing with that plantar fasciitis. He's now on the 10-day IL. Royce Lewis tweaked his hammy in the eighth inning Tuesday night. He got the MRI today. It revealed a grade one hamstring strain, lowest grade you can get, so that's good news. No timetable on his return, but it sounded like he did express a lot of optimism about his chances for returning the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Obviously, things could have been a lot worse, I guess, with both these guys. We didn't know what was going to happen. Instead, the Twins kind of feel like they got out alive here. No major long-term injury news with their two best players. It feels like anyways, as of now, knock on wood, there's a real possibility they could be back in time for game one of the playoffs. Just what's your thoughts, I guess, on getting them back in time? And more importantly, what's the confidence level without them in the lineup right now? Like just how far of a drop-off is there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Correa's obviously had re- very noteworthy struggles. And offensively, you may not lose as much with him. However, he's Carlos Correa. He's won a World Series. He was great in that World Series. And it seems with Correa that it's more of a pain tolerance issue because he's been playing through it for four months. Now, I know he had an aggravation in the Cincinnati series, and that could make it more difficult. So we'll just have to wait and see. Plantar fascia could take months to truly heal. So again, he might be gritting it out. I mean, he might be battling every single swing, every single step. I thought he was putting together some great swings in September and some really good ball games. Defense stayed strong. If he can just give you what he'd been giving you this last month, I think that'd be acceptable to a lot of people. 
the hamstring worries me with Royce, man. I mean, these October games, they're chillier. Uh, baseball's a sport where you stand around and then you have to make a sudden movement. You stand in the box, you stand, you wait, you swing, then you run. Um, that just seems like a recipe for a tweak very quickly. And you know what? You're not going to know until it happens. You, you might feel fine. He might feel really good going into those games. But the second you have to sprint to first base and then leg out a double or move up on a wild pitch, I, I am worried about it, to be honest with you, not to be a downer. But that one concerns me not only because of the nature of the injury, but because of the bat that you're losing in the lineup. The clutchest member of the Twins offense in the second half of the year, just a radical personality that changes the culture of the, the dugout. Um, his energy is palpable. That's a guy that I really want in there, and I'm worried about it. Yeah, he sounded super optimistic when he talked to the media today. The problem is with that dude, he could get hit by the light rail walking into the stadium, and he'd just talk about how great the weather is that day. Like, he is. You, you talked about that attitude, man. He's just always Mr. Happy-Go-Lucky. So it's tough to get a real accurate gauge on just how much better he's actually feeling since Tuesday night. Obviously, everyone crossing their fingers. Both these guys are going to be back in the lineup come October 3rd. And what a luxury, too, by the way. Twins locking this division up so early. J just take that pressure off, right? Take the heat off of rushing either of them back too soon. That's awfully nice. And obviously one of the benefits of winning the division with eight games to play for sure. Um, last one here, then we'll get out of here. I think he kind of touched on this, but if you had to guess, what's the starting pitching rotation going to look like for games one, two, and potentially three of the playoffs for the twins? Like what's your confidence level with each one of those guys right now? And then maybe, I guess maybe more importantly, where's the needle at right now with the bullpen? as far as how those guys have looked mm -hmm. the past few weeks heading in. Obviously, we just watched Thielbar give up that two-run bomb in the eighth, and then Duran make things look as dramatic as possible at the end. They got the win, but come playoff time, these lineups are going to be a lot tougher than this Angels team. I'm going to predict Pablo in game one, okay. even though I have a slight preference for Sonny Gray. I think they're both great. Pablo's kind of been burned by that big inning, like I mentioned, and Sonny just gets on cruise control, and I, I feel like his blowups are a little more mitigated. Um, but Lopez, I like to pitch deeper into a game, I guess. Like Sonny does tend to get into some trouble third time through the order. Pablo might be a little more immune to that. So we'll, we'll and Rocco's not going to let him go that deep into these games anyway. Right. So it is going to come down to that bullpen. And I think they've found some really interesting niches. I mean, it's it, it's clear who your high leverage guys are. Duran late, like closer right he's late late in the game um jacks has had ups and downs this year but i think that jacks is probably a seventh inning guy feel bar has one of the lowest eras in like team history for the amount that he's pitched Theo bar era went up tonight um but he's obviously going to be your seventh or eighth inning guy depending on the righty lefty you know matchups that he's going to face so if you've got a solid back of the bullpen that that kind of are all cohesive at the same time, that's how the Royals did it, man. That's how the Royals won a World yeah, Series. Good, they had a call out, yeah, you're a right. Seven, eight, nine lockdown bullpen, where if you got to the seventh, it was over. If they had a lead in the seventh, bye bye, lights out, bye bye. I don't know if this group is quite that. Um, Dur Duran has lost his command a little bit in the second half of the season. He had a good little stretch here until tonight, but that breaking ball, when it abandons him, it abandons him. And these batters have no issue laying off these really spinny breaking balls two feet outside. That's not hard for them to lay off of, and then they can just sit on fastball. And even though he gasses 102 up there, they can still – these are professional hitters. They can still catch up to that, and they, they wait on it, and tonight – uh, they had really good contact against him. So I'm I'm a little worried about that. Um, but I also know he can blow you away if he's feeling it on a certain night. So he's he's still gonna be the guy. You gotta trust him. Um, but you know, there are reservations about about all of these high leverage relievers, but I think at their best, they can be very, very good. Yeah, a lot of different factors, a lot of different variables when it comes to playoff baseball for sure, but without a doubt, pitching. Always near the top. And I think the Twins have been getting plenty of quality starts. So whether it is Sonny Gray or whether it's Pablo game one, um, it's nice that Rocco's got some options, as you mentioned, some different avenues to explore when and if needed 
during this, hopefully, knock on wood, hopefully long playoff run. All right, man, good stuff as always. Congrats to the Twins, third division title in five years. Hope everyone cashed their season-long prop bets tonight over at FanDuel.com. So glad you guys could join us on tonight's postcast. Another quick reminder, by the way, we're going to be here nearly every single game from here on out the rest of the season, including the postseason, where we get our guy, Twins Guru, Brandon Warren to help break us down all the action. Can't wait for that. That's your reminder as well. Go check out Brandon Warren every day over on the Lockdown Twins <clears throat> Lockdown Twins po podcast because he's pumping out everything you need to know as far as the Twins as they try to stay hot, they try to get healthy heading into the, the postseason. Uh, Sam, that'll do it for us, man. Follow us on X at Luke underscore Spinman. He's Sam over at at Sam Ekstrom. Follow all our work over at the Lockdown Sports Minnesota Network. Game two of the series tomorrow, first pitch, 110 p.m. Central Standard Time. We got Sonny Gray on the mound for that one. For Sam Ekstrom, I'm Luke Inman. Until next time, signing out.